Okay, so welcome to this next video in which we are discussing how the uh, botulinum neurotoxins work. Right, uh, so, uh, so far in our story, what's happened is the botulinum neurotoxin has gone in uh, through receptor-mediated endocytosis into, uh, the, uh, into the axon terminal of our um, neuron. And then what's happened is when the endosome was acidified, uh, the heavy chain changed conformation and pushed the light chain through the membrane of the endosome into the cytoplasm of the axon terminal. That light chain is now an active enzyme which is going to cut snare proteins. Okay, and the specific neurons that the botulinum toxin um, targets, very much so, it will go into other neurons, but the ones that it specifically likes are cholinergic neurons. And as you probably know, cholinergic neurons are the ones which innovate, innovate all of our muscle cells in the peripheral nervous system. So, if we stop those uh, peripheral nervous system cholinergic neurons from, um, from releasing acetylcholine onto the muscle cells, then what it's going to cause is it's going to mean that we get paralysis, para paralyzed muscles, uh, what's known as flaccid paralysis, basically. Okay, but we'll discuss that later in a, uh, more in a moment. Okay, so firstly, let's discuss uh, where this uh, light chain of the botulinum neurotoxin is going to cut. So for this, we need our picture of the snare complex back again. So remember that the snare complex, if this is the synaptic vesicle, it consists of this synaptobrevin 2, and if this is the plasma membrane here, we also have syntaxin 1 here, and then finally, SNAP25 here. Okay, so let me colour these in. Right, so in SNAP25, SNAP we'll have in blue here. Okay, in pink, we'll have synaptobrevin 2. Okay, and then finally, in green, we'll have syntaxin 1 here. Alright, okay, so let me label them all up, and they form this core uh, snare complex, which at the moment is a trans core snare complex. So this is syntaxin 1. Okay, this is SNAP25, and this is um, synaptobrevin 2 here, which is the V-snare. Synapto, ooh, dear, we've run out of space. Brevin. Two. Right, so the first thing to say is that there are many different types of botulinum neurotoxin, and uh, the different types cut different snares, while their light chains cut different snares. So uh, I'm going to show you where the different types of botulinum neurotoxin uh, light chains cut the different snares. Okay, so we'll start off with those botulinum toxins which cut synaptobrevin 2. Okay, so the first one is botulinum neurotoxin G, which cuts very close to the membrane anchoring portion. Okay, so this is the cutting site of botulinum neurotoxin. And the way you often denote the type is you put a forward slash and then G for some reason, like that. Okay? So that's the cutting site of botulinum neurotoxin G. The next site is just upstream of that, here. And this is the cutting site, and I'm going to have to space this out more, otherwise we're going to um, run out of space. Uh, this is the cutting site for botulinum neurotoxin B, so BNTB. And interestingly, it's also the cutting site for tetanus neurotoxin. Now, we haven't talked about tetanus neurotoxin at all. Tetanus neurotoxin does cut snares as well, and it cuts specifically synaptobrevin at the same point as botulinum neurotoxin B. We'll do a whole video on tetanus uh, in its own right, because it's causes, it causes the exact opposite of botulinum neurotoxins. Botulinum neurotoxins are going to cause what's called um, flaccid paralysis of uh, muscles, i.e. you're not going to be able to contract those muscles at all. Tetanus neurotoxin causes the exact opposite. It causes uh, spas well, spasmic paralysis or, um, well, 
it means that your muscles are continuously contracting. Uh, so it's spastic paralysis, as it's called. So you can't control it. So you can't actually make meaningful movements, but your, all your muscles are continuously contracting. And that causes, uh, you know, your jaw to clench uh, because all of the muscles of mastication start contracting and you're trying to chew all the time. Um, the so-called lockjaw, and it also causes all the muscles of your back to contract, and that causes you to sort of curl over in what's known as episphotonus. Uh, but we'll discuss that in a whole video on its own. Okay, uh, so um, it's just interesting that the botulinum neurotoxin B cuts at the same site as the tetanus neurotoxin. That's all that you should take from that at the moment. Okay, uh, so uh, next one up from that is the botulinum neurotoxin D, okay? So this next up, upwards here, is this cutting site of the botulinum neurotoxin D, okay? And then finally, upstream of that, is the cutting site of the botulinum neurotoxin F. Okay, so, uh, all of these botulinum toxins target synaptobrevin, botulinum neurotoxin B, botulinum neurotoxin G, botulinum neurotoxin D, and botulinum neurotoxin F. Right, okay, so the next one we'll discuss is syntaxin 1. Now this one's nice and simple. There is only one botulinum neurotoxin that targets syntaxin 1, and that is botulinum neurotoxin C. So botulinum neurotoxin C is going to cut syntaxin 1. Okay, and then finally, let's discuss uh, SNAP25. And all of the botulinum toxins that affect SNAP25 cut j at one of these strands of SNAP25, one of these alpha helices. So they all cut the same one. So firstly, very close to this sort of membrane binding portion uh, is the cutting site of botulinum neurotoxin E. So this is the site for cutting of botulinum neurotoxin E. Then upstream of that, here, let's say, uh, you have the cutting site of botulinum neurotoxin A. So botulinum neurotoxin A. And those two just cut SNAP25. Finally, there is another one that we've already seen before that cuts SNAP25, slightly upstream of these two. And this is at botulinum neurotoxin C, NTC. So basically, um, botulinum neurotoxin C cuts both syntaxin 1 and SNAP25. Botulinum neurotoxin A and E both only cut SNAP25. And uh, B, D, F, and G all cut synaptobrevin. Right, so what's the significance of this? We've dawdled over this exact cutting points of uh, these snare proteins. What does it cause? Well, basically, if you cut these snares, they're no longer going to function. If the snares aren't functioning, then you can't dock vesicles at your membrane. If you can't dock vesicles at your membrane, you can't fuse vesicles with your membrane. You can't release neurotransmitter. Neurotransmission is going to stop. And which neurons did I tell you that um, the uh, botulinum toxin complete, uh, affects most? Well, it's the um, cholinergic neurons, specifically more in the peripheral nervous system. So, your motor neurons, the neurons which synapse with your muscles and release acetylcholine onto them to make them contract. So, let me just draw this. Here's a neuron, an acetylcholinergic neuron, synapsing with a skeletal muscle cell here. Okay, uh, this is no longer going to function. It's not going to release acetylcholine onto your neuron anymore. So can you contract any of your muscles? No. You get what is known as flaccid paralysis. All of your muscles go flaccid. They stop contracting at all. And you can't make them contract, so you are paralyzed. So that's why it's called flaccid paralysis. Okay, now, what's going to happen to your muscles that um, cause you to breathe? Your diaphragm, your phrenic nerve, which innervates your diaphragm and causes you to breathe. So let's just draw a little picture of this. So if this is the rib cage here, uh, well, the rib cage here, okay, cartoonly denoted, of course, uh, the sternum in the middle here, okay, uh, more ribs over here, um, and rib one here, let's say, going back to the um, 
the vertebral column back here. Okay, I'm wishing I hadn't drawn this now. Uh, and at the base, you have the diaphragm. So let's colour it in pink. Colour will improve the picture. So here's the diaphragm at the bottom. And basically, there are motor nerves innervating that and causing it to contract all the time. It's not like the heart. The heart will rhythmically contract even if you cut all nerves to it. The diaphragm will not. So once the phrenic nerve stops uh, releasing acetylcholine onto the diaphragm, it will stop. Okay? So you'll get respiratory paralysis. And if you stop breathing, you stop get respiratory failure and uh, you don't get oxygen to your tissues and therefore you die. So um, people who do ingest botulinum toxin are at risk of respiratory paralysis and death uh, from that. And the disease it causes, this sort of flaccid paralysis, is what's known as botulism. Okay, so the collection of symptoms you get is known as botulism. Okay, so that's all for this video.